Good afternoon, everybody. Jim Fleeler, Vice President of Sales for Charlotte Products in Canada. Welcome to today's webinar series. We continue to do it. It's Wednesday, April the 14th, just getting into some nice warmer weather now. Uh, and today's topic is really disinfectant delivery methods and the risk of overuse and employee wellness. And we've talked to a lot of our customers, a lot of facilities across North America, that have really come to us and said, listen, can you revisit some of the disinfectant protocol? Can you really add in the topics of employee wellness and what happens if we overuse it? And what are the long and short term health effects and things like that? So we've really decided to switch gears and, and really address uh, the hundreds of people that have actually uh, asked about this. And again, we'll have Ask with Williams with us as well. We'll do op open mic uh, discussions uh, surrounding proper cleaning and disinfecting protocol. Uh, the word of today is lockdown. I mean, we're going through, it almost seems like we're getting a weekly lockdown now and state of emergencies and stay at home orders and things like that. The third wave, which we've been talking about is obviously officially upon us. Um, some countries, as far as vaccinations are performing very well, others are not performing that well. It's taking a little bit of time to ramp up there and I'm sure uh, that'll uh, continue to improve. I know uh, I have my uh, my appointment finally made and the second appointment finally made, uh, which, which is terrific. Uh, you know, I'm gonna feel really good about that. Um, we're heading in the wrong direction again. Okay, the, the uh, ICUs are full, their stress on employees is at an all time high. Uh, the level of anxiety is uh, again rising, employee fatigue, mental fatigue, mental wellness, all of these particular things, you know, questions, will it ever end? Will it ever go away? I mean, uh, how much longer can it possibly go on? I mean, I know I canceled our family trip to Florida for the fourth time now. Um, which is disappointing, but quite honestly, it's the right thing to do, you know. So so these are a few of the questions that people have. And uh, look, we're all going to get this through this together. We've constantly said that it has uh, prolonged itself, uh, you know, its expectancy for sure. But, you know, we will come out stronger on the other side and with vaccinations and things like that. So, so with that being said, uh, we'll just get uh, right into the program here. And away we go. Okay. So the importance of listening, learning, and communicating. You know, and this is this is really the good about COVID and what it's done. And every virus or every threat of a serious bacteria worldwide um, always brings us together. You know, we, we learn things, which is a good thing. We suffer. There's no doubt about that. But we learn things. And, and if we communicate together, we can certainly uh, obviously benefit there. I mean, there's been a lot of worldwide health challenges, uh, you know, but we've had a lot of new learnings. So in other words, we know more today about the awareness and the risk of this new virus. And you know what? Quite honestly, we've been saying it. There will be another form of virus in the next uh, in the foreseeable future. And it'll be something, so dealing with this one and really addressing it and, and uh, combating it will help us for new new threats of viruses and bacteria as we go ahead. Uh, you know, what we have learned is there's a rising importance of our industry to promote clean, safe, and healthy. And I don't think that's ever going to diminish. That's not going to go away, right? The switch to virtual business models uh, and working, staying at home. Uh, I haven't been on a plane since March the 3rd of 2020. I know I've said that several times. I don't miss it to tell you the truth we're still continuing on you know spreading our education and transferring that knowledge to our valued customers in a virtual way we're all getting used to that you know the importance of personal protection has risen to the top the business survival has risen to the top how do we continue to do business to maintain a profitable business in a virtual format restaurants the the introduction of ghost kitchens and all of those particular things this is listening learning and communicating. Uh, you know, there's been a rise in the importance of our cleaning and custodial industry. That's not going to go away. There's been a rise in the importance of hand hygiene. That's not going to go away. You know, cleaning, disinfecting protocol, validation, all of those particular things, right? You know, and the truth be known that the fact is we've been long overdue uh, for some of this focus on our cleaning industry as a whole. Uh, I always want to talk, uh, what did we learn from uh, uh, from our own personal uh, business uh, strategies here? I mean, what we did and accomplished in 2020 and 2021 
one, we've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in production equipment, automation, efficiencies, data analytics, all of those particular things. We immediately stockpiled raw materials disinfectants, packaging, corrugate, trigger heads, you know, all, all of those particular things. Within two weeks, we launched our number one selling uh, disinfectant, ES15, which is our ready-to-use disinfectant, and our pump-up sprayer. And I'll show you those as we go along in the show here. You know, but within two weeks, we had that launch. Now, that wasn't just we learned about COVID and then developed it from there. Ask what's good, but he's not that fast, actually, as a matter of fact. You know, we had that. We pride ourselves on innovation. We had that in the works for probably 8 to 12 months ahead of time, but knowing. And what you should know is we're already working we're steadfast working on product innovation with new disinfectants with shorter dwell times and higher kill claims and safer and they'll be out this summer of 2021 as a matter of fact but that's what Charlotte does and that's what we've accomplished and that's what we'll continue to accomplish as we move forward we registered 14 disinfectants with Health Canada and EPA numbers okay in 2020 we implemented a disinfectant allocation program to make sure that every customer received a constant supply of disinfectants and food service sanitizers. We launched our Serve Clean Alcohol hand sanitizer and sanitizing wet wipes. We hired new employees. We prolonged, uh, or sorry, we pro produced products for, you know, 20 hours a day, six days a week, plus eight hours on weekends and things like that. I mean, we constantly had, you know, production on the go here. Uh, we introduced our new educational webinars back on March the 13th of 2020, which we continue to host today, uh, and along with our YouTube videos and our blogs and our website upgrades and things like that, all about helping you help yourself in facilities and really uh, transfer that knowledge, you know, to do things safely, do it properly, clean, safe environments is really what it's about. And then we upgraded also the knowledge of every one of our employees in order to serve our customers to continue uh, to do that better and again, transfer that knowledge. So that's just a few of the highlights that we've done and we're continuing to do that behind the scenes. You know, as far as the future goes, it is in the best interest that we protect ourselves today, but never ever lose sight of tomorrow and beyond. Just when COVID goes away, and it will sooner or later, okay, what's next, right? We can't lower our guard, you know, by, by any means. The public now is hardwired for convenience. You know, they've discovered the virtual world that's here to stay. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're ordering food or you're ordering goods uh, uh, from the big e-commerce players or whatever it may be in the in stores. I mean, believe me, we're hardwired for convenience, right? There's a major emphasis in the need to provide clean, safe, and healthy facilities. When we do return, and we will in some capacity, uh, the public will not tolerate uh, unsanitary conditions in facilities, right? So if you're a business owner, an entrepreneur, a national chain, I mean, right now you should be working on those strategies for clean, safe, and healthy spaces without doubt, right? There will be a major focus on quality-based cleaning versus price-based cleaning. We just wrote an article uh, a couple of weeks back there, uh, you know, that was through ISSA Canada that really focused on, on building service contractors and the absolute importance of quality-based cleaning versus that bottom line price, right? You get what you pay for if you've heard that before. You know, since following COVID-19 preventative measures, you know, did you never stop and notice that the seasonal flu has pretty well disappeared? Okay, uh, you know, wearing masks, washing your hands, hand sanitizer in appropriate areas, all of those social distancing, all of those particular things. I don't know one person personally that has the flu or actually had a cold, as a matter of fact. So there's some learnings here, right? So, uh, you know, I'm not the scientist by any means, but I know there's some learnings here. You know, there appears in a lot of communities to be a rising sense of kindness. You know, we still have some silly people out there that are in a bad moods and, and, and probably rightfully so. But, you know, I know on my street, when you see people going down the sidewalk and whatever, there's just a, a, a sense of kindness. You know, people are really stopping to sincerely ask you, hey, how are you doing today? You know, and, and if that's all that we get out of this, that's a good thing, right? You know, so what I do know is we may begin to appreciate what we had before we got into this thing. 
and positive changes certainly certainly good without question so let's talk about what's cleaning and and i know we've talked about this a little bit before but but cleaning is not about grabbing a bottle of x from the grocery store and putting it in a pail and using a sponge or a paper towel or whatever i mean it's it's more complex than that than what you really are trying what are you trying to achieve when you clean well you want to remove unwanted substances safely from the environment you want to clean away visible dirt that people can see you want to clean away the dirt that you can't see like microbial contaminants and chemical residues and things like that it's not all about visual here right you know that process doesn't necessarily kill germs uh, but by removing them it lowers the risk and their numbers and the, that risk of spreading and things so you know and you know how good you feel Cleaning is not generally you jump out of bed and think, oh boy, I get to clean today. But you know the feeling when you do that that extensive house cleaning and the windows are shiny and clean and streak free and the air smells fresher and the furniture is cleaner and things and the floors and stuff. That's a good feeling overall. So cleaning really is a positive thought process without question. Okay, uh, let's talk about the purpose of disinfectants and sanitizers. Sanitizing is generally used in food service establishments and what that does is it it sanitizes the surfaces which really lowers the number of germs on the surfaces or objects to, to be deemed safe okay as judged by public health as a matter of fact uh, that process works by either pre-cleaning uh, with a general purpose cleaner degreaser or a disinfect or a disinfectant the surface and then applying a registered sanitizer to lower the risk of foodborne illness if you look at a three sink system for dishes you'll have a heavy duty pot and pan uh, muscle detergent then you'll have a rinse bay rinse water bay and then you'll have a sanitizing level uh, or or uh, bay as a matter of fact and that is a 60 second dip of all your cutlery and plates and food service items and things that's generally how sanitizing is used and you got to think about sanitizing if it's deemed safe by public health for you to digest food items from that cutlery and slicers and dicers and plates and things like that and you can consume it in the body that's pretty safe Okay, so never underestimate the value of sanitizing, and we've talked about that a lot in our uh, in our webinars in the past. Okay, disinfecting that's a process that eliminates many or all of the pathogenic microorganisms as per the specific label on the product on hard surfaces okay if it's got all the 27 letter words that it kills this and this and this and this if you follow the instructions it will do that but it won't kill something that is not there or at least it's not proven to kill something that isn't by the label so the importance you've heard us say for a year now follow the label instructions right the only way you can disinfect is by following the five critical elements, that is, and by pre-cleaning surfaces with either a good quality cleaner or a disinfectant, if that's a protocol by infection control officers, and you, and then you apply the disinfectant and lower the risk of that, uh, of an outbreak and contamination. So pre-cleaning is important. You know, general cleaning is, is important, sanitizing and disinfecting. Okay, some chemistry facts and concerns. I mean, con disinfectants are considered more aggressive in nature. You know, follow your wor workplace compliance, regulatory compliance, your GHS standards, your SDSs, which is safety data sheet warnings. Okay, we've put a little example up here. When you start to see this information, by the way, is provided to you as a precaution and education that you understand, you know, what are the first aid measures? What are the issues if we have somebody that swallows it? What are the issues if it become if it's spilt or something like that? So this is your really your right to know what's in there. But disinfectants, again, are generally more aggressive without question, right? You know, they can be considered poisons and toxins. They kill things, okay? They kill bacteria and viruses. That's what they're there for so respect them in return and you will do just fine because they're all approved by the EPA by the World Health Organization by the CDC by Health Canada it doesn't matter they've gone through stringent protocol to make sure they're safe providing you the end user uses it properly okay a major concern we seldom follow health and safety and SDS uh, precautions leaving ourselves at risk 
With the time to read it, generally they get read when there's an incident in a facility. They should be read and understood ahead of time. In fact, HR usually has you write a GHS test and make sure you're certified in that nature, okay? Uh, but historically, 95% of the world's disinfectants are used improperly. I think since COVID came about, we may be at about 90%, uh, but that's still a failure, okay? One area that we can really make a difference is by following the actual label instructions, right? And I think ask with one of the questions later, and we'll ask ask with put them on the spot, is really about immunities and what happens when you're taking a form of penicillin or whatever it may be from, the, from there. I mean, if you take it right, things are good. If you don't follow the label instructions, then you're going to have a risk there, you know? So, but regardless, I mean, it is a failure, right? And that'll create a long-term risk of creating immunities in the near future. Okay, so let's talk about delivery methods. This one here, quite honestly, uh, probably 50% of our calls are talking about delivery methods and that's why the, you know, you, the customer has come back and said, let's talk about it, okay? So since COVID-19 came about, I mean, new technologies such as foggers and misters and the electrostatic sprayers and even drones, and I'm saying yes, even drones, those airborne devices, they've flooded the market. Okay, uh, we've had an increased use of pump up sprayers and charge buckets and flip tops and things like that, you know, and but what you need to know is regardless of what the delivery method is, whatever, whatever, if you follow the exact label instructions on each product, you'll get the end result. Okay, you know, and but I'm going to talk, I'm going to break these down individually here and give you some information that you need to be aware of. The micron particle sizes range from about 40 to 110. Okay, the smaller the micron, keep in mind, the faster it dries, perhaps not respecting and achieving the dwell time. So if your label says it has to stay moist or wet for five minutes, and you've got a really small micron size that dries out in two minutes, you're failing. Okay, the larger the micron, the more moisture, and obviously it should stay wet longer. Uh, now, this is all subject to humidity and air circulation in a building as well. But, you know, if you've got too much moisture and you've got sensitive electronics around, you know, uh, you may have some surface residual and cross-contamination there. Okay, so it's very careful that you match the right product with the right delivery method. Okay, let's talk about foggers and misters. Generally fairly expensive pieces of equipment. They run on 110 and I didn't put any brands here because I don't want to really uh, promote or de-promote any particular brands as a matter of fact there. But here's an example of improper guidance. And this is buyer beware. You really need to read these things, okay? The instructions from this particular device said that in an office environment, you should use this device because it has a micron size of 40 to 45. Okay, now that's very small. In their instructions, they even state that if you use this device, uh, it will deliver you a four minute dwell time. And honestly, you cannot say that. Okay, just because I've got a product and I go through a room, uh, I mean, what's the speed of the caretaker or the janitor that goes through? What are they applying? Are they going through the room fast and spraying? Are they going slower and spraying? That deciphers how much material is left behind on a surface, okay? You cannot say that if you use this device, it's gonna come out, they can say it come out at this micron size, but they can't say it's gonna stay wet for four minutes. What if it's breezy? What if the fan's on, the air conditioning, it's humidity? You're in where all the parts of the world where, where the temperature and humidity, they can't say that, okay? It's very difficult to know, right? It really comes down to that application speed and the amount of product left behind on the surfaces, right? And again, very small droplets, so they're passively deposited on surfaces. They'll vary due to the direction of the spray and the effect on, on gravity and all of those particular things and get uneven coverage, okay? Let's talk about electrostatic sprayers. Here's an example, again, of improper guidance. These are great tools, by the way, if you're using them right. That's what that's what we're saying, where they're great. But, but I mean, most instructions and the training videos, and I've gone on YouTube and things and looked at them all, okay, the majority of them, they don't direct you in any way to follow the label instructions, 
Okay, and that's incorrect. Okay, they they promote you know they uh, they have a electrostatic positive charge of droplets. They wrap themselves around surfaces and crevices and underneath items and things like that. But let's review the five critical elements. One of the first things is to properly pre-clean the surface. If you're going in a room, because that's all I see generally on on these electrostatic sprayers, you're going in and it shows a janitor or a custodian spraying this this disinfectant, and they have not pre-cleaned the surfaces. Even if the electrostatic positive charge clings to the bottom of a desk, you have not cleaned that surface underneath the desk. And that's where improper guidance goes on. It is a great tool, fast tool, applies uh, uh, disinfectants faster in general, saving labor and, and giving you efficiencies there. But if you haven't followed your five critical elements, you are failing. Okay, absolutely. Okay, and then this one here, quite honestly, um, this one is, is a little scary, as a matter of fact. These are airborne little helicopters that fly through the air. They're referred to as drones. Um, they're the newest of these methods. I mean, they've been used for recreation, you know, kids and, and adults use them and they have competitions and they fly around, you know, uh, the air and things like that, you know, as a, as a remote control uh, device. Uh, but these here, they've adapted solutions tanks to them and they're spraying disinfectants in higher areas and stadiums and, and different levels of facilities okay uh, it does have one benefit where you can keep the cleaning staff's feet on the ground so there's no lead, no need for ladders and scaffolding and, and eliminating that risk of, of uh, fall okay but once again you cannot go through a stadium okay and just blatantly spray a disinfectant from the third level fourth level fifth level uh and 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 hope that you're killing in fact there is a a new study out that says the amount of disinfectant in an air in the air of a quat based disinfectant is allowed and it's zero and i may have this wrong but it's 0 0.00001 ppm all disinfectants mostly come out at, at 800 ppm, 2000 ppm, 3100 ppm, so you can't do it. Imagine being in a hockey stadium and you've got your hot dog and your soda and your popcorn and a drone goes over top and, and sprays 3000 ppm of a disinfectant, that's not healthy for you or anybody else. So this one here is, although it's very fast and it does help keep people's feet on the ground, uh, it's not the right delivery method. If you do all of the five critical elements first, it's okay. And you clear the people out of the room, it's okay, but you can't do it that way. Okay. This one here is the most famous one that we brought out in uh, a year or so ago uh it's all about labor efficiency and uh, and really it's a it's a it's a very low cost dispenser it pumps up like a garden sprayer um it applies uh, an adjustable amount of uh, product by the way so from finer to moisture depending on what your label and respecting the dwell time it's very easy to use this is basically designed to speed up the application of a person using a trigger sprayer by about 10 or 20 times okay you know again it's still a delivery method there uh, but I mean it is it, the big risk that we have is is your you we've got to educate people and we're going to be we're asking people facilities to clean and disinfect more often so how do you address your labor costs with that increased frequency and still still come in on budget right well this is one simple way do I prefer this one over the other ones yes I actually do as a matter of fact you know uh, but it is fast it is safe and the whole works but it's a delivery method and again I must be cautious here you've got to follow the label instructions okay let's talk a little bit about employee wellness the current crisis we're in uh, should be a wake-up call for us all you know now's the time for recovery we've got to turn uh, this uh, into a, an opportunity to improve and start doing the right thing today to protect our future Okay, um, we just need to do that, right? Few facilities will ever will they, they just won't go back to the way we did everything pre COVID nineteen. Uh, the majority of people want to see clean, safe facilities, clean, safe, healthy facilities. They they they've got to really re earn your trust uh, that you're a clean facility, whether you're a food service or a 
grocery store or whatever. I've noticed some of the grocery stores in our town, the one we shop in, uh, its level of cleanliness has come up by at least twice as good as it would generally what it was. You just feel safer in there. And you know what that does for sales? An old marketing, marketing uh, uh, you know, a mission from way back is, is the longer people stay in a store, the more they buy, the more they buy, the more successful the business is, as a matter of fact. And people won't trust you if you, they won't come back if your place is, is really unsanitary, right? Education and transfer, uh, in our knowledge, that, or sorry, the, the knowledge of our, our, our ability to transfer knowledge, uh, that's our specialty. We pride ourselves on assisting people and learning and remaining innovative. Uh, I mean, we really do that. So that's an employee wellness overview. Let's talk about employee wellness as it relates to product product overview use, okay? There's no doubt that our standards of cleanliness will continue to rise, okay? The frequency of cleaning is, has increased. It'll continue to increase. The market is right now probably designing new tools and, uh, and products to speed this up for us because we always sort of uh, respond to this relatively well. Uh, it's critical that we have the correct cleaning and disinfecting protocol in place. Um, there's a lot of facilities that are struggling. Uh, you know, we're faced with a serious issue here, the incorrect procedures, uh, the way we used to do things, we have to change because we cannot leave chemical residue on surfaces behind okay employee wellness sensitivity skins uh, eye or skin eyes lungs respiratory doesn't matter what it is I mean there are going to be some issues and we'll talk about that in a, in a few minutes as we go we go through here with Asquith not wearing the appropriate PPE I mean you just can't uh, you can't you can't do that I mean, these things are not costly. I mean, goggles, gloves, and a mask. I mean, protect yourself. If people around you decide not to do it, that's fine. At least you wear it from there, okay? The overuse of disinfectants and hand sanitizers. That is a risk that I personally am concerned about, especially when we're, do we're not doing it correctly. Um, but what we're talking about there is, you know, is we, we, it's like taking too much penicillin or not the amount of penicillin and causing immunities, okay? If we're using it too many disinfectants incorrectly, uh, we could develop the next immunity and uh, we can talk about that a little bit more, okay? The overabundance of sewage discharge is a problem. Plastics, disposable materials, PPEs, yeah. Uh, mass everything else in your lakes and rivers and things you know that is to do that's I mean, you see those now in parking lots you'll see these masks sitting there laying there been thrown out discarded blown away or whatever the effect of this in a river or stream or sewage system is going to be a problem down the road fish animals the impact on them you know what will the long-term effect on ourselves and the planet be Right? So be respectful of that, okay? I'm sure there will be a lot less uh, maybe disposable as we move along. Right now we've got to respond with what we can to stop the threat of cross-contamination and illness and loss of life, uh, but there will be better ways for masks and all of these PPE materials coming uh, as we go along. Five critical elements of disinfectant security. Number one, always use a registered product. We have 14 on Health Canada list and the EPA list as of 2020 and 2021, okay? Make sure you read and understand that label. Make sure you dilute it pro properly. Regardless of what the dilution or the delivery method is, you need to make sure if it says one to 64, it needs to be one to 64. If it says one to 512, it needs to be one to 512, okay? always verify your PPM. We've done webinars, all of our YouTube videos, all of our webinars are still online at charlotteproducts.com. We have one specifically on measuring PPM and it doesn't matter if it's chlorine or peroxide or quats, ask with Sarah dipping in, in the pail, showing you, I'm showing you, verify PPM. Our sales of PPM paper have probably you know, 20 times more than they ever were before, and they should be even higher than that, because if you're using a disinfectant, you should be verifying and validating your PPM, okay? Number three, always pre-clean surfaces. Whether it's with a good quality general purpose cleaner, or if it's mandated to use a disinfectant cleaner, you always need to pre-clean -sur pre surfaces. What does that do? 
pre-cleans removing a lot of contaminants that can impact, negatively impact the performance of your disinfectant. So you got the peace of mind of, of a better clean and disinfect or sanitize surfaces if you do that. The contact time, they're not, the, every single one of these disinfectants that are in the offering today worldwide have different contact times, right? They're not all a certain time. They used to all be 10 minutes, but what you've seen generally and what you've seen now is there's one minute, there's two minutes, there's 10 minutes, there's five minutes, there's 60 seconds, all of these things, right? And then if you're around food contact surfaces, anything around preschool toys and things like that around children, you should always have a potable water rinse, okay? And that's your, if you do that, and by the way, right now, we have a, we, we, we have a, a failure rate on that across, globally across the world. One area to improve, one area to make an immediate impact on you at a very, very low investment is this, this particular slide. Okay, here's some sustainable thoughts for cleaning and sanitizing as we move along. Pre-cleaning, do I need to use a disinfectant or to pre-clean? No, unless infection control dictates that, okay? But let's talk about the value and the performance of a GP cleaner versus a disinfectant. What I do know is a disinfectant really focuses more on the killing properties of the product as opposed to cleaning. Okay, I mean, it's got a, all the stated pathogens, it really focuses on that. But a general purpose, good quality cleaner is safer. It's really designed around improving employee wellness and fewer complaints and fewer issues with absenteeism and eye irritants and skin irritants and respiratory irritants and things like that. It's less expensive. You will lower your cost by probably five times by using a GP cleaner versus a disinfectant to pre-clean. Okay, uh, you know, with, without doubt, right? That's, uh, that's what it does. There's higher dilution ratios, you know, less plastic in the landfill, fewer containers. The cleaning performance is superior to most disinfectants because the chemistry focuses on detergency. Okay, not on just disinfecting claims. So pre-cleaning with a general purpose cleaner on, or a disinfectant if infection control dictates, that's our guidance here. Okay, so a couple of things here and what's, what's amazing, and I don't know if you can see the board behind me, but when Asquith comes in for the Q&A, you'll see it. Four years ago at least, we made this statement at Charlotte to safely remove organic matter and then sparingly, thoughtfully, and carefully apply disinfectants and sanitizers in those higher risk, high contact points. That was four or five years ago. That was long before COVID, by the way. Okay, you know, so our position as a leader and an innovation master in the industry, I mean, here's, a, here's just proof. This is one of our largest sales area there where we use a dispensing system that has two products that will clean and disinfect or clean and sanitize about 95% of your facility at the lowest possible cost ready to use you could get, safer with no employee, uh, with, with uh, no chemical contact, with benefits of employee, uh, well, wellness and improvement and uh, and color coded triggers and bottles and wall charts and things this program has been long standing Okay, we have a universal, an eco logo approved uh, universal cleaner that is good for, it really comes out light duty, medium duty, heavy duty, and we've got our, our disinfectant, both registered with Health Canada, uh, both approved for use across the world here, our ES64H, and we have our new ES364, and that 364 has a norovirus kill claim and five minutes as a matter of fact, okay? There's the dispensing cabinetry, plug and play, ready to go. I mean, you can just see a variety of the products, the wall charts, the color coded bottles, triggers, flip caps, all of those particular things. This dispenser takes approximately 11 minutes to install, totally pre-plumbed, pre-tipped, pre-labeled, ready to go. I mean, it's four screws, an inlet water hose, the two products that go into it, and you are done. Okay, well, the biggest decision you have to do is would you like two two liter containers or would you like two 4.73 liter containers? So based on your chemical volume there. But I mean, as far as following all of the things we're trying to do with pre-cleaning and safer and more cost effective and faster, I mean, this is your exact solution right here. 
Okay, uh, well, I move to some education here and we'll move along and wrap up the webinar here today and we'll get to our Q&A section. Uh, but I mean, these, they, uh, we're constantly changing our, uh, our, our website design. Um, you know, Jen leads our marketing department across the globe here and she's really changing this. Her and her team are changing these all the time. Education is what we pride ourselves on. Go onto the website. You can see where it's green. Media center, webinars, blogs, videos, news and events. That there is where you can get your best return on investment for no charge, by the way. Okay. I mean, right there, uh, you can go on there and get all the information that you need every one of our webinars, every one of our blogs, and we are writing more articles in more trade magazines than we ever have, and it's just solid information, okay? This is our webinar web page here uh, that you can see, you can go on, I mean, learn about the impact of ghost kitchens and what cleaning solutions work, okay? Learn the evolution of most recent enhancements of wood floor coatings. We had our Christmas one. We've had, we've had our, uh, uh, you know, our environmental services, uh, you know, we've had our, our pandemic perspective with Rita Soares from, uh, from Toronto General Hospital. I mean, it goes on and on and on and, uh, and things like that. We've got, we've had Dr. Kellen Scott on here talking about the the issues surrounding global pandemics and things like that you know we've just had i mean look at the information that's here okay you know and then recently our blog page here as well it's not just about uh, one or two of us participating we get all of our employees uh you know with the pride built in of being asked on a, a specialize in a topic to help you Okay, you know, this information is priceless. I mean, it is here, uh, you know, so and again for you to take advantage of and I can tell you we're extremely proud of that without doubt. Okay, so with that being said, we're going to switch over to our open mic session with uh, Asquith. Uh, there's been a tremendous number of inquiries submitted this past week. There's a lot of serious interest, as I've said, about surrounding employee wellness and the eagerness to learn how to properly clean and disinfect. And we'll get right into that uh, momentarily there. And just a reminder, our next webinar date is Wednesday, May the 12th at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time there. Uh, the topic, we're going to announce that uh, as our world changes here dramatically. There's been a lot of state of emergencies and lockdowns and stay-at-home orders and things there. Uh, one, as you know, just as recently. Recent, actually two of them recently this month as a matter of fact and we want to stay on top of that uh, but believe me it'll be well worth your education so with that being said thank you and uh, we'll switch over to uh, an open mic session with Asquith and myself great we're live ready to go excellent excellent to well, Asquith I said uh, open mic session again we're not doing your 10 technical minutes this week uh, mm -hmm. you know for sure uh, how, how are you doing I'm doing well. How's the vaccination? <laughs> I got an appointment. You got your appointment? I've got an appointment. Good, good. How about you? Yeah, I got mine actually, uh, my appointment. Uh, in fact, I have both appointments mm -hmm. uh, for a week uh, from today and mm -hmm. then uh, four months after, I, I believe it's the Pfizer or Moderna mm -hmm. shot that I'm getting. Um, right in Peterborough at the Evanard Center. I went online okay. and went on the waiting list and got it. So I yeah. uh, look forward to that for sure. I got the same thing. So yeah. uh, we're looking forward to getting that, that's for sure. Yeah, excellent. And trying to stay safe. Excellent, that's, that's for sure. But the key thing is though, we still got to wear a mask. Oh, there's no question. Still got to do your social distancing Do the social and distancing, the six feet thing. Yeah. And um, still got to wash our hands. And we still got to use our... Yep, your your Our children, tools. you know, you still, your, your family still gotta, there. Still got to use the tools. Yeah, for sure, we do. But well, yes. you remember this, mm -hmm. it's funny with the mask. Uh, I, we did a little video on this, the importance of a mask. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I mean, this is an aerosol uh, air freshener, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, and obviously the virus is airborne mm -hmm. and the whole works. And I remember demoing this just quickly. And, and if you wear a mask, okay. That's right. Nothing comes out. That's right. Right. You know, so what that is, is you're protecting others there. But, uh, but imagine as well, if you're wearing a mask, it's also the other way. Mm -hmm. So if other people don't and you're exactly. wearing a mask, so it's exactly. protection for others and pr protection for you. So pretty simple a, stuff, isn't it? I don't know why people don't, you know, and, and whatever. But, but anyway, it's, yeah. uh, we're in the same bubble. We social distance. We That's do all right. that kind That's of right. stuff and mm -hmm. wear our masks, uh, you know, the majority of the time, you know, without question. Um, but we actually did this studio specifically for this. Exactly. You know, definitely. So, so Jen, have we got some questions today from the crowd? Ah, thank you. 
Oh, oh, geez, it looks like a lot of questions asked with. And uh, we have mm -hmm. our timer on us again, as you can see going. <laughs> this isn't 10 technical minutes. Uh, we're losing a little more control all the time. Did you notice that? I realize that. We used that. to have hours, and now we're down to 10 minutes. And 10 minutes. <laughs> the whole works there. I, I liked our old IT director better. I think maybe he, he was a little easier to get along with. <laughs> there, so let's get right into it here. Okay. I uh, got some questions. Uh, Boy, April 14th, holy cow, It's time is, it's just is flying, flying that's for sure. We've been doing this for about a year plus. Uh, March 13th was our, was our first wow. official, so we're over a year. We're actually 13 months into it wow. there to the day pretty well. You know, pretty crazy. Which is, and I know we told you we'd need you for one or two, but we sort of fooled you. Uh, <laughs> but here's, uh, here's Roxanne. Uh, she's just heard about some hand sanitizers that have large amounts of cancer-causing benzene in their benzene. formulas. Benzene, ask us, is, is this this a serious risk uh, for my short or long-term health? I mean, benzene. That's, that's a serious stuff. Benzene yeah. as yeah. a hand sanitizer. Yeah, I've just heard it. The FDA announced it um, just a week or oh, so should ago. Be, yeah. Those the manufacturer should be charged, and the stuff should be off the shelf. Yeah, you can't use benzene no, in there. No, no, you know, definitely uh, not. And that's Roxanne. I mean, Roxanne, yeah. that's a great question for sure. Yeah. Um, oh, and here was oh, second part. At the same time, all of those original alcohol hand sanitizers that smelt really bad, have they been discontinued? And I hope so. Yeah. They, you know, Health Canada, uh, the FDA, they've been pulling all these things off the shelf, and I hope they continue to do so. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that they pulled uh, over 250 companies uh, mm -hmm. off the shelf. Mm -hmm. uh, look, there was a time when we needed it, oh. and you had to formulate what you could and, and whatever, but then uh, authorities stepped in and said, okay, no. No, we're, we've caught up with inventory, and now it's time to get rid of those things, yes. and away we go. They yes. did serve a purpose, I guess. Um, to a certain degree, well, but benzene not, certainly doesn't no, no, uh, no. serve a purpose. Folks, do not buy things with benzene and put it on your hands. <laughs> okay. that, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. Here's a question from, a great mm -hmm. question from Roxanne. Here's Mike. We have a difference of opinion in our facility about pre-cleaning surfaces. Some of our cleaning crews say to you only use a sprayer. Some say there's no need to pre-clean. Some say you must use a disinfectant when you're pre-cleaning. What's the correct method overall for the best safety? So now we did just talk about the importance yeah, of pre-cleaning and everything else. I think you did, a you did a fantastic job yeah. doing that, Jimmy. What's your thoughts? You know? Well, I say always, number one, follow the use directives on the label. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. And it will never lead you wrong. Right. Follow those use directives. You know, you got to pre-clean. You got to remove soils away, visible soils. You got to remove those things. You got to do your proper dilution. You got to do your, your dwell time. You got to do um, uh, your proper rinsing if necessary on food contact surfaces, et cetera, et cetera. So you got to do those things. Follow the use directives. Never mind your internal protocol because the people who developed the dif disinfectant did all the precautionary work. They did all the safety work. You know, wear your proper PPEs and do all those things and you'll be fine. Yeah, uh, it sounds like Mike's got three or four or maybe even more custodial individuals mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, obviously people yeah. have a difference of opinion, yeah. but you're right. I mean, yeah. the label's the law, follow what it says follow and, it, and says. it won't lead you astray. Never. <laughs> I think that's your point there. Never lead you astray. Yeah, here's mm -hmm. Susan. First, I've heard of drones flying and applying disinfectants from the air. How can I achieve a level of disinfection if they're not following the five steps that you talk about or the label instructions well, of the we, product? Well, we just touched on that as well. Pretty clear. You know, right? pretty clear. You, you uh, look, uh, I'm all for labor efficiencies and speed and all mm -hmm. of these delivery methods mm -hmm. if you're following the five critical elements, right? You follow know? The, follow and, the elements. It, and that's the label. I, I got to give you a t-shirt that says, follow the five critical well, elements. Yeah, yeah. I but get you. Maybe sure I get you one small because I'm a small fellow. That's well, these we days, will so try I that. Don't want don't we'll an extra we'll large <laughs> like I normally do. But yeah, I mean, look, I, I've, <laughs> I talked to a couple of customers that were developing drones and I refuse to partner with them from a, from my position of sales across Canada. I refuse to be associated because it's wrong. And rightfully so. Yeah, I, I mean, look, the, the premise is right. The, if they're pre-cleaning and following all the protocol, I'm right on board. Mm -hmm. But this, in, this company just wanted to just blatantly spray. No in a stadium, as a matter of fact, and in between, you know, sports periods and stuff, you'd have popcorn or hot dog and you've got someone spraying 3,000 ppm of a disinfectant. 
That's not a no good thing. Good. No good. Yeah, so good question, mm -hmm. Susan. For sure, you cannot, yeah. right? Uh, here's Ralph. In my building, we have a large amount of carpeting to maintain. Is mm -hmm. deep extraction safe enough, or should we also supply, or apply a, a sanitizer afterwards for some extra safety? Well, deep extraction is very safe. Yeah. No doubt about that. And you add um, a sanitizer afterwards and extract it and, and so forth. I think you'll, you'll, you'll be fine. Yeah. Making sure, though, to use something that won't uh, uh, stain the carpet. Right. So that's something that one must keep in mind. Yeah. So a so food service, a sanitizer, food service sanitizer, sanitizer, they dilute generally at 1 to 512. Right. I don't think you're going to have yeah. much issue. You but you also issue, but always, always, always should do always test color fast. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. For sure. But I mean, a food service sanitizer, uh, number one, is good for digesting. You know, So I mean, if you've got children and pets mm -hmm. and they're mm -hmm. on the carpet mm -hmm. and you want that extra peace of mind, I, maybe you had somebody in the house or the, the business that you weren't quite sure about their overall sanitary levels or something maybe mm -hmm. not a bad idea well, it's, not, it's, it's not a bad idea yeah yeah, yeah. okay Just, you know, I, I th yeah. well he says here for extra peace of mind and extra safety, peace so, of mind and so safety yes i think ralph absolutely i would i would absolutely I, I don't have a problem and we did a webinar on it uh, i don't know six months ago or something i remember where we did disinfecting extraction and mm -hmm. applying a sanitizer mm -hmm. so maybe ralph uh, revisit that as well and it'll give yeah, you some ideas I think so. there I think yeah so. here's kw um, K A Y and then W. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, all of your webinar training are are all of your webinar training materials still available online, or do we need to request them? Oh, they're all online. Yeah. yeah. So just go right online. Anything you, any topic you want to discuss, go online and uh, you'll you'll see that. I know Jim's done a lot of work, a lot of demos, and. Uh, I, all of those things are there. Well, that's what the whole team does, right? Mm -hmm. We even reviewed a few of them mm -hmm. there today. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, we had Dr. Helen Scott from the World Health Organization right. on her global perspective of exactly. pandemics. We had Rita Soares. We had Jackie mm -hmm. Bowen from the Simcoe County Board and her we, perspective. We even had the kids on. Uh, we had the children. We, we had, had kids Mr. On. and Mrs. Claus yeah. on, you know, yeah. which is still my favorite one there. I know that's uh, your you favorite know, one. You know, so, so uh, that, that's for sure. That was mm -hmm. my favorite. But yeah, they're all there and away we go. Here Here's Roger. Uh, wow, here's an interesting one. We struggled buying enough liquid hand soap to go around, so we mm -hmm. had to buy bar soap for some of our staff members. Mm -hmm. Most of them were okay at first, but then their hands and skin became irritated and, re and red, causing them some discomfort. Is it true that a bar soap is generally a higher pH, and should we really use liquid soap when possible? Well, you know, we touched on this in some of the technical minutes that we talked about mm -hmm. about pH. soap mm -hmm. yeah ph soap. and stuff like that soap basically is a saponification of fats right uh with an alkaline so yes the soap um the hard soap will be slightly higher ph than a regular hand soap liquid hand soap but a good quality uh soap should be fine now people are allergic to many things you know uh, people have allergies to just about anything and so you know, if something that uh, a good quality hand soap um, should be fine, but uh, we make uh, a lot of our soaps that meet the uh, the pH of the skin somewhere between five and a half and seven and a half mm -hmm. in that in that region, which um, uh, mitigate um, uh, uh, adverse reactions yeah. where possible. Yeah. yeah, soap is a, I mean, look, every one of our, our skin, it's all different, right? It's more sensitive. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, some of it is, you know, it, it doesn't ever have an issue, but others, the slightest mm -hmm. little bit of something happens. Mm -hmm. I think your team's working on some nice hand hygiene uh, development oh, yeah. and stuff we there are. too. So again, another example of innovation and I mean mm -hmm. our shorter dwell time disinfectants mm -hmm. I mean we, we know what's coming yes. we're excited yes. we can't yes. you know tell everybody about right. it but boy mm -hmm. we'll never let you down with innovation I mean and technology and and really cleaner safer spaces Abs I mean yes. that's what it yes. is so, but that's a good question I mean, very we good used question to, we I mean remember every bar soap was everywhere right know. you know and stuff and now mm -hmm. it's liquid or foam or whatever here's Ann uh, we're using your ES15 ready to use disinfectant in our facility mm -hmm. we also always follow the label instruction instructions sometimes mm -hmm. we get a little residue left behind on some surfaces we just do a clean water wipe with a clean microfiber cloth can you confirm if this is okay to do and that's okay to do yeah the right thing to do probably a, yes you want to you know uh, reduce any residual especially again we go right back to the, the five critical things 
especially if it's you know mouth and kids uh, toys or um, food contact surfaces and also to for um, to mitigate buildup of residue yeah because, for sure yeah. and you know mm -hmm. uh, follow your ppm too i mean es15 mm -hmm. is uh, is our number one seller it's yeah. a fairly high ppm yeah. count i think it's around 3100 so We're yeah if you're on. yeah if you're if you're mm -hmm. applying a lot of it and uh, and it's uh, you leaving a little bit there yeah you're you're mm -hmm. doing the right thing this is and yeah, yeah you're definitely yeah. doing the right thing oh, yeah, it won't absolutely. it won't affect the performance yeah. at all yeah. here's v provided just, of course the dwell time has been oh, the five critical you know? elements yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah. good okay, statement good. here's v it just says v um that's interesting I understand that we may be in for some health issues in the future since we have increased the frequency of disinfecting surfaces mm -hmm. and using alcohol hand sanitizer. What kind of circumstances could we face moving forward? Well, you know, you know, it's hard to say. We but... know a V in HR. Maybe this is... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you better be careful here. <laughs> this, this could be an HR question here. <laughs> uh, v, we don't know for sure. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, you know, what we need to do, though, is to follow the use directives. I often go right back to that, the use directives. That's where all the data has been collected. You know, uh, you wear proper PPEs, you follow the instructions on anything that you do. You know, they're not there for fun. Yeah. They're there to make keep you safe yeah. and healthy. Yeah, it's like an SDS sheet. I mean, Absolutely. all of a sudden, when we came out mm -hmm. with the new GHS format, we had higher rated products, you know, and mm -hmm. then people said, "Well, geez, now all of a sudden I can't use it anymore because it's rated higher." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it was just more precise information Absolutely. that you needed to be aware of and uh, and to take precautions. Mm -hmm. You know, use mm -hmm. it properly. I think V here. I, I I think she could be referring to too is if you go to the doctor and you get an antibiotic or mm -hmm. penicillin or something mm -hmm. and they give you 12 pills and you decide after a few days you've taken six pills you feel better you stop taking it i think she's maybe referring or could be to an immunity there um and you know and and staying on that theme if you if we're using these disinfectants incorrectly and we're mm -hmm. applying them in all mm -hmm. kinds of mm -hmm. strange methods and things like that, mm -hmm. uh, and we're not doing it right, um, maybe she means that too. Okay. Could we be creating okay. immunity? Okay, okay, right? okay. I think I, I, think, just... I think I think maybe what you're saying from you know the what you're inferring here is you know you'll have um, bugs mutating. Yep. and becoming slightly different from the mm -hmm. original. Mm -hmm. You've seen a lot of that in COVID-2 now with all the different Cor strains. Yep, and the so variants on, right? and stuff. All the different variants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think perhaps that's along those lines. And yes, you must follow the use instru instructions. Yeah. Well, you're sounding like a broken record there with that yeah. following the instructions. Follow the instructions. Uh, v, if that didn't answer your question, uh, please reach out, you know, email yeah. us again, and mm -hmm. we'll make sure that we get some more clarity for you there. Yeah, uh, I agree. We've only, uh, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the clock here. We only got a few more minutes here. Really? Uh, uh, here's Kathy. Is your sales force mm -hmm. back? to calling on facilities or are they still staying away? Uh, is your plan to focus on more virtual programs and conference calls in the future? Well, I think that's the future really in yeah, all of virtual calls. Uh, people like it and yeah. um, you know, we, we are more productive really that yeah. way. You yeah. don't have to spend two days on a, on, a, on a flight back and forth. We can reach the world in 10 seconds. We had a yeah. conference call, mm -hmm. if you remember, a month or so ago, and mm -hmm. we had someone from Germany, someone from Vancouver, mm -hmm. someone from, I think, Atlanta, mm -hmm. and then here in Peterborough at the same time. And imagine, know. you know, know, they all would have had to flow, fly and uh, things. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah. Uh, time for one more here. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, this is Chris. Thanks for sharing today's topics. Your statement of us all being hardwired for convenience is so and apparent. Mm -hmm. However, uh, being an entrepreneur, we still must support local business whenever possible. Please. Oh, yes. Obviously. Yes, you got to yeah. support local business. You, you, you know what? Uh, Especially now. I mean, really. Whether you, you spend a dollar or five dollars or twenty dollars or whatever mm -hmm. in a local business, I mean, here's our choice. This is my personal mm -hmm. opinion. This mm -hmm. isn't mm -hmm. Charlotte, okay? Mm -hmm. But if we stop buying, okay, they will close and they will not return. And we're limiting that uh, entrepreneurial, private, uh, local giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, there's a very it's 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 a pleasure to deal with those type people. Mm -hmm. And there's room for everybody. That's my yeah, position. Yeah. But if we stop, I mean, Chris, obviously, and we we are hardwired for convenience. And what's good is these people will probably they'll up their game with convenience and mm -hmm. online ordering or curbside or whatever it may mm -hmm. be. You know, I know. 
our city here, we've got downtown about 80 entrepreneurial food establishments that are just unbelievable, you know, and things there. Mm -hmm. So that was a good point no, there. Very but, good uh, point. Yeah. And here's the last question. I know our timer is coming down here. Uh, this is Blake. Are you going to continue your 10 technical minutes in the future to ask with? That's hey, for you. Yes, uh, absolutely. We will continue the 10, the 10 technical minutes. Just send those topics in and we'll try to discuss them. Yeah, we just we just had an overabundance of people asking mm -hmm. about this and we thought we would take it in there. And, you know, so mm -hmm. our lockdowns, I mean, uh, stay at home, all of those things. I mean, holy wow. It, we're just, uh, I know. you know, it's a fluid situation here for sure there. But but anyway, we do have to wrap up. I, I'd like to, you know, say thank you to uh, to everybody for attending. Thank you, Asquith, again for coming in with an open mic. And okay. our next one is Wednesday, May the 12th. Uh, is what it is okay. and um, we look forward to that and we'll have the latest there any closing comments for you well my closing comments are always the same wash your hands social distance and wear your mask yeah excellent okay so that being said stay safe stay well and uh, we'll see you uh, May the 12th thank you